Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. Today we're going to continue our Planets and Profiles series by looking at the moon in the sign of Cancer. So in this series, I've been taking the moon through the 12 signs, but if you look back in my archives, I have already done Mercury, Venus, and Mars through the 12 signs. So you, And occasionally I will rewind those episodes when uh, the planets ingress into new signs. And it's it's a nice way to get a reminder of the kind of archetypal meaning of each of the planets through the 12 signs. So we've been kind of slowly building this library, and I hope it's useful for you guys. Uh, today, again, we'll continue with the moon in Cancer. So that's what we're doing. Before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and uh, share your comments and reflections, especially if you're a moon in Cancer and you have something to add. Uh, you can find a transcript of any of my daily talks on the website, nightlightastrology.com, including today's. And when you go over there, I want you guys to take note of a couple of things. One is the last in our Planets in Love series. Let me switch views here. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Here we go. Go up to the live events, uh, the events tab and go to live talks and you'll find that Uranus in love is happening on April 18th. We already looked at Neptune in love and Pluto in love in this monthly webinar series I've been doing. Uh, it's friendly for beginners, but specific enough that intermediate and advanced students can certainly get something good out of it. When you register, you'll be given a live webinar link for the 18th. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. If you can't make it live, you get a recording. Also, if you uh, go to the shop page, you can find a whole bunch of archive talks and series masterclasses that are now available for sale that I've done in the past, kind of an archive shop available. And then if you go to courses, go to first year course, you can see that in June on the 16th, our next first year program, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, a one year immersion into ancient Hellenistic astrology uh, begins again. So I hope to see some of you there and I will be starting to promote that more regularly and in depth uh, in the weeks ahead, but we are officially open for registration, so you can check that out. The other thing to check out, of course, is Ashley's Herbal Apprenticeship Program. The Herbal Foundations Apprenticeship begins on April 24th. If you go over to skyhouseherbs.com, click on the Courses tab, go to the Herbal Foundations Apprenticeship. You can learn more about it, early bird pricing, and need-based tuition, like all of our programs provide uh, is is there for you to check out. And um, the that apprenticeship starts again on April 24th. If you stick around after today's uh, Planets and Profile episode, you will hear an interview that I did with Ashley about her program. If you want to learn more about it, what it includes, and if you want to get to know her more, you can also check out her YouTube work. Skyhouse Herbs on YouTube is where she makes her regular astrological content. And let's get my camera back here. There we go. So uh, yeah. All right. On that note, let us now delve into the magical world of the moon in Cancer. Um, so I'm going to put this little presentation up on the screen here and, uh, show you guys here, we'll share the screen. Okay, here we go. All right. So we're looking at the moon in cancer. And as I've been saying throughout this series, there are some things you have to remember when taking any planet through the 12 signs in order to understand any planet in any sign. You have to start by understanding the nature of the planet itself. So the moon's universal significations are the broadest in their meaning or application. Those are the broadest philosophical meanings or the broadest symbolic applications for individual souls. And on this universal level of symbolism, the moon represents the realm of fortune. It is the world of daily life in the material universe, the daily flow of events, the constant changing and impermanence of the environment, of mood, emotions, mind, body, events, circumstances. It is life in motion. That is the moon whose uh, latitude is always changing, whose face is always changing, who's moving the swiftest, who's closest to earth. The moon was said to be the ruler of the realm of fortune, which is the, the choose your own adventure uh, book that we're living here. By contrast, now, the moon's topical significations are going to be any of those that represent the most specific or concrete people, places, or things. For example, the moon can represent things like body uh, and health. It was one of the signifiers of body and health. Mothers, women, home and family, or even your dwelling place or land that you live on it can be associated, of course, more broadly with ancestry, things like tribe, village, clan, culture. The moon can represent things like marriage and pregnancy and childbirth because it is an extension. The moon, uh, as the ruler of family, is connected to things like uh, marriage, pregnancy, and childbirth as well. 
Um, so it's not just that Venus represents love or just the seventh house, but the moon can also represent marriage, broadly speaking. But it's also whatever we nurture or devote ourselves to, as well as very specific things like food or cooking. Um, now, the significations of the moon are then going to be modified according to the sign the moon is traveling through at any given time or at the time of birth as a natal signature. So if you have the moon in Cancer, it means that the moon was traveling through that sign when you were born. The meaning of a sign <clears throat> is most primarily related to the planets that are said to preside over that temple of the zodiac. So when we think of Cancer, we're thinking of the natural temple of the moon. It's actually the moon's home sign, but it's also Jupiter's exaltation. <clears throat> All right, let's move on here. All right, moving on. The moon in Cancer can thus be understood according to the following features of the sign of Cancer. Cancer is the feminine temple of the moon. And so the moon is actually very at home in Cancer. It's one of its natural dwelling places. The cancer as a sign is likened unto the moon as the moon is likened unto the temple of Cancer. It is uh, a tropical yin water sign. Tropical meaning that it comes, it starts at the moment of one of the four uh, turning points of the solar year. Tropos at the root of tropical means to turn. And the summer solstice from the northern hemisphere is associated with the starting point of cancer in the tropical zodiac. Tropical zodiac means that the zodiac is rooted in the four turning points of the year, which are the equinoxes and solstices. So it is a tropical yin sign. So it is a turning point that is considered to be a feminine turning point, and it's a watery feminine turning point. <clears throat> Cancer is also the exaltation of Jupiter. It's the sign of the crab. One of the things that you have to remember about the sign of Cancer is that the sun from this point of view is starting to set in the solar year. Although we're still on the light dominant half of the year and there's three more signs to go while the light is still more there's more light than there is darkness i should say the sun is now starting to sink from its highest point down toward the southern horizon of the earth and it's this idea of the sun descending from a high point down into the earthly sphere that was associated with the descent of the spirit into matter or the birth of the cosmos as in the uh ancient Thema Mundi chart that had cancer rising. It was also called the gateway of mankind, and it was associated with conception and birth or the entrance of the soul into the body and the womb of the mother. So there's this idea of something kind of in, in spirit moving into the midwifing process, coming down into earth, and that, that that's the sign of the mother. So <clears throat> really beautiful symbolism uh, relating the moon and Jupiter, who is also a giver of life to the sign that is associated with the descent of spirit into the material world of, of manifestation. It's the first sign of zodiacal summer. That's important. We just said that. Now, the moon in Cancer can be understood as lunar, watery, tropical, yin kind of moon, which is the sign and environment most like the moon herself. So there's, again, an affinity between Cancer and the moon. So here are the kinds of things, along with the sort of Jupiterian, maternal Jupiterian great mother qualities um, that you will see uh, reflected in Cancer moon placements in natal charts. Cancer moon individuals are often maternal. And if they're not maternal, then they are highly devoted people. Like oftentimes, if you had to split it down gender lines, you'll often see that there is this kind of um, very, very deep emotional sense of loyalty and devotion to things and attachments to things that people care about. Uh, and that could be described as sort of maternal or it could be described as sort of devoted. Um, but either way, there's a sense of caring, tending, nurturing, um, and there's also a lot of nature-based themes that come with cancer. Uh, anything that is a combination of romantic and earthly, uh, there's a, a, a definitely like a, a, a romanticism in cancer, but it's often very yin, right? So it's very, um, it's, it's connected to the world of the body and the mother earth kind of energy. Even though you think water, some people will think Taurus, mother earth energy, which is fair. That's the exaltation of the moon. But cancer also, a lot of nature-based themes, very romantic placement, very romantic in the sense of 
the heart and its attachments and its ideals and its sense of being connected, uh, mind, heart, body, mood, emotions, and feeling safe and at home because it's connected to things that it loves and desires. So it's romantic, but very emotionally romantic. Like Pisces is a little bit more otherworldly romantic. It's a little bit more like a, the, the, the fantasy world is a little bit more ethereal. However, Cancer's romantic world is sometimes, I almost want to call it a little bit more like, um, I don't know how to describe It's a little bit more um, familial, uh, cultural. Uh, it, it, its connection is often to things that have great, that have been assigned great personal value in the earthly realm, like your attachment to a photo album. Um, but anyway, distinguishing things a little bit. Moody, that is a classic Cancer Moon theme, uh, as well as needy or clingy, which are sort of shadows. Uh, but also remember the opposite of needy or clingy is oftentimes devoted, loyal, maternal, nurturing, often very healing uh, presence in the Cancer Moon. Embodied, sensual, and compassionate, You'll find that Cancerians are very um, the maiden and mother dichotomy, <clears throat> as well as the sacrone. They're all sort of present in Cancer very fluidly and will often make for um, very well rounded and very attractive um, kind of feminine archetype because the, the moon phases themselves reflect this different stages of femininity unfolding in the, in the story of life, so to speak. And archetypally, it doesn't have to be literal. And along that path, <clears throat> this is often a, uh, the, the, the men or women who carry this archetype will often just feel um, there's, a, there's a softness and a sweetness and a very embodied, fertile kind of feeling. Uh, it's often very considered very attractive by many people. Um, now, secretive and nocturnal, that's it as well. Very private, sometimes very secretive. <laughs> can be kind of passive aggressive at times. Emotionally intelligent, uh, environmentally sensitive to moods, feelings, actions, things, you know, cancers can really feel what's going on in a room. Often natural caretakers or caregivers, healers, nurses, wound tenders. Sometimes there's a need to be needed though that can be problematic where a person may derive their self-esteem from being needed. And sometimes the cancer moon points to the need to be emotionally individuated or better boundaried in a sense. I care for people, but I also know how to care for myself. I don't derive all of my meaning from being useful to other people in some caregiving capacity. I'm going to save, heal, fix everyone. Childlike as well as maternal. There's an interesting way in which the Cancerians are often just very innocent and sort of childlike. And then oftentimes they can flip and show the face of someone sort of wise, grandmotherly, um, you know, parental and so forth. <clears throat> you'll also find that cancer moons are often protective and defensive, sometimes a little shy. The protectiveness and the defensiveness has to do with the fact that the moon is so intimately connected to fostering a feeling of connection, safety, and security in the earth. It's like, <clears throat> think about the impulse that so many animals and species have to create a nest, to create a den, to create a safe place for rest. Um, so there's a protectiveness and a defensiveness. Sometimes that's overly developed and it becomes problematic. We'll often seek out emotional and physical shelter security in the world. We'll often have to learn lessons about uh, opening up and becoming more vulnerable or learning how to feel more safe. Interest in the past in family history, culture, or roots is quite common, including anything, even things like archaeology and history. Uh, lovers of the embodied world, reflective, often contemplative, will often mirror or match their environment and lose track of how they actually feel and what they're actually needing. That's a, a real tendency because it's very relational and it tends to mirror like a mood ring, what environment it's in, mood rings and moon rings. Reclusive or hermit-like, especially the men, this has been kind of well-documented by a lot of modern psychological astrologers that men often embody, the who embody Cancerian archetypes will often be sort of private and shy or tend to be more reclusive. Like one thing that people don't know about me as a card carrying a cancer son and mercury and cancer is that outside of creating content like all, like this, like I'm, I'm quite shy and reclusive. I'm not the world's most social person. Like this is this one specific area of my life where I am. And it's not that I'm antisocial or anything, but like I'm definitely more introverted and people wouldn't necessarily guess that about me because, uh, you know, I share stuff on a podcast or whatever. 
But anyway, that's it's it's funny because especially the men in my experience uh, will be often more hermit like or reclusive. But that can also be true for women, and it's not just a gender thing. So throw that stereotype out if it's not working for you. Um, now. Following famous people were born with the moon in Cancer, and I was able to see some interesting connections to these people. You maybe will or will not. And believe me when I say that I am not, people always seem to get this twisted. When I use examples, it's not because I have any opinion or judgment about these people or their worth or I, there's no like, uh, this is not hagiography as they say. I'm not here to like, uh, you know, make these people saints or anything. You know, I, I really don't have any opinions about the people that I share this stuff with, honestly. So I'll, but I'll tell you why I think the archetype connects. Conor McGregor is interesting because he's a very famous MMA fighter and quite cantankerous. Um, and one of the things that has been described by just about every uh, commentator in the mixed martial arts world, and I, I I have an interest in that stuff. I got into jujitsu a few summers ago and really had fun with it. And then I, you know, occasionally I've watched matches and so on, heard, heard commentary about mixed martial artists. And what they always say about Conor McGregor is he is one of the moodiest and like um, shy, moody, shy, sensitive, and highly romantic and sentimental. I couldn't believe that when they described him. And so I had to look it up and I found that he was a cancer moon. And I just bookmarked this as something to talk about when I got to the moon and cancer episode. You wouldn't think that because he's such a, um, I don't know, there's so much like bravado and there's he's a fighter and so on and so forth. There's other placements in his chart that make sense to me when it comes to the other parts of him that kind of come forth. But three planets in Cancer, he's often been described as incredibly like emotionally changeable. And that's an important detail about him. Okay, of course, there's Taylor Swift. I don't know what to say. If I say, it's like you say anything about Taylor Swift, there's going to be a million people who know more about her <laughs> who have their own opinions or whatever. Here's the one thing that I found really interesting about her though, is that she has always been able to capture the moods and experiences that people have had that are sort of timeless and archetypal, especially like teenagers, um, teenage love, uh, feelings of being not understood. So she, and she really like started, as I understand, she started writing, you know, a lot of her, most profound music. She would come home from like junior high or high school or whatever it was and write music about what she was experiencing at school. I think you will find in a lot of Cancer Moon cases that there is this really creative, poetic, romantic sensibility that's able to capture moods and feelings that every human can relate to. Um, as though she's somehow, it's like she's transmitting the archetypal stages of youth adolescence, teen years, your 20s, falling in love, breaking up. That is so, people with moon and cancer are somehow able to captivate our emotional and romantic um, imaginations. They, they, they just can speak to things that are sort of timeless that we all experience as the, the moods and atmospheres of the different stages of life. And I think that that's something that really stands out about her work and what's probably contributed to her fame. And, and I was reading about that and I thought, yeah, that's a cancer moon. That makes total sense to me. Maybe there's other things you could say as well. People who are, if you're a Swifty, you know, if you know more about Taylor Swift than I do, please chime in as to what else you think may uh, stand out about her work to this point. Um, uh, that might be considered kind of um, moon and cancer-ish. The thing is, is that we have to remember that these placements, like all I'm able to do with famous or historical people is point out certain elements of what is known about them publicly and how they relate to archetypes. There's so much, of course, that we don't know that's really uh, just about their personal lives. So I never mean to look at a chart to delve into people's personal lives. It's just purely from the standpoint of what has this person shared as a public icon a, a public myth, so to speak, in that we can see some connection to those archetypes in their chart. Kurt Cobain's another interesting one. He was born with the moon in cancer. Um, the, the One of the things that really stands out to me is that he was someone who was, again, described as highly romantic, very reclusive and shy at times, um, had super intense issues with codependency and um, uh, in relationships and uh, kind of coming from some of the trauma of his upbringing and also, uh, you know, drug problems that were a standout feature of, you know, his his marriage. Um, the, the, the moody, sensitive themes of cancer are often really difficult. Pair that with a whole bunch of planets in Pisces for him and some also in Scorpio. You get a very watery person, but one who is very 
moody and romantic and who also captured the angst of being a teenager or young in your 20s he was you know he really captured that angstiness of uh growing up and also had a lot of the features of the cancer moon that are honestly like um some of the some of the shadows especially around like codependency um dave chappelle now whether you like him or not one of the things he's very famous for is being reclusive i actually did a list i i, I did a search i said who are the most famous reclusive celebrities? And I just Googled it and I was like, this will be interesting. And he came back in several different articles as someone who has just completely vanished and is self-described uh, as very reclusive. He's got the moon and Saturn and the South Node in Cancer, by the way. I think that's interesting. But I just thought he was an interesting example specifically because he has been, he has described himself as incredibly reclusive and is also someone who, although he's very famous, he likes to take long periods of time. I think he lives on a farm, if I remember correctly. But anyway, he he likes to take time away from uh, the press, from the outside world, and he just sort of disappears for long periods of time. Um, and that's something that he said he just feels like he has to do for his sanity. I thought that was really interesting. Anyway, Lena Dunham is an interesting, uh, another interesting character. Um, the the reason that I thought of her. Now, let's just see if I can, um, hold on, I got to grab a note here. I'm not going to be able to bring it up unless I stop sharing for a second. Okay. Um, where is it? So Lena Dunham. Yeah, so here it is. I thought this was interesting. First of all, she's another person who really captures the um, the essence of like being a young woman. So the maiden kind of thing like uh, again like we think so regularly about the moon only in in cancer only in terms of mothers but actually the moon in her cycle reflects all the different stages and phases of the goddess and she's really famous for just sort of writing about um being a vulnerable young woman and being a powerful young woman and being a sexual young woman like or her or the series girls and everything like that she also um developed something called i want to call it the friendly house it's a woman's rehab center and sober living facility in los angeles uh, it was interesting that it was specific uh, something specific that she developed for um women so anyway that's lena dunham with the moon and cancer as well um william blake famous romantic poet uh and someone who was enamored by the way in which the ideal world like in you think of tiger um and the the way in which the ideal realm is here embodied in flesh and and that there's this kind of duality between light and dark in this embodied world and he he was his he he had a way of capturing the ferocity and beauty of nature and connecting it to something otherworldly and heavenly I, I i find that like william blake is a great example of a moon in cancer insofar as he was someone who developed a very deep relationship with the material world and impermanence and suffering within it but with also with a healing and kind of compassionate and like devo devotional touch whether you like him or not, again, and and not saying anyone's perfect, but that's a one feature of a Cancer Moon here that really stands out to me. William Blake, Eleanor Roosevelt is interesting. Um, again, let me just take a look at my notes here. Uh, you know, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that she was really um, known for. She advocated for women's rights and um, ability to be in the workplace, as well as civil rights, human rights, uh, care and concern for refugees. So I think Eleanor Roosevelt really has this kind of, um, you know, she had a very motherly quality and, and there's a kind of a concern, especially for, for women and for the care of uh, families and refugees. And, um, you know, so again, a great cancer moon kind of archetype at, at work in some of the things that she did with her life. Pablo Neruda, again, a romantic poet, look at that huge stellium in cancer. Uh, but the moon in Cancer is a new moon in Cancer. So there's more than meets the eye than just the moon, right? There's a whole bunch of planets here, especially Venus and Mercury as well. Like such a, that's the poet, right? But the moon in Cancer for Pablo Neruda, who's often described as a kind of magical realist, uh, surrealist, uh, romantic poet. Uh, so if you like Pablo Neruda, there's a moon in Cancer for you for sure. Henry David Thoreau is very similar in the sense of, you now here's someone who sort of went out into nature uh, to have this kind of devotional, romantic, poetic relationship and, um, you know, kind of a reclusive guy as well. 
It was very uh, moon in Cancer. Shakira. This is super interesting to me because one of the notes that I have for Shakira is that um, <clears throat> she was inspired in large part by uh, a her father who wrote poetry. So she grew up in a family that had some elements of, um, you know, artistic like sensibilities. And she, in particular, like, it, it, and we don't like if this chart, I, I can't remember off the top of my head if this chart has been rectified or if it's a double A rated or what, but if you look at this chart and the moon it actually is in the fourth house, that would be the place of the father in ancient astrology. I think that's interesting that she had a very sensitive and sort of romantic poetic uh, father and grew up in a family where that kind of artistic heritage was uh, present. But anyway, she is obviously also just all kinds of woman in one. And I, I find that that's often true with Cancerian uh, women, especially the moon in Cancer, that they, they, they can embody like multiple feminine archetypes at once. That's kind of neat. Anyway, uh, Tom Cruise, uh, famous Cancer sun and moon in Cancer. But um, one of the things that is interesting about him is that he's also been described as incredibly moody, very um, shifty and changeable. Like he reminds me a little bit of the same kinds of things that have been used to describe Conor McGregor, where it's almost being described as sort of unstable at times. Um, and he also had a severely, a mentally ill father who uh, he was, his father was severely mentally ill, if I remember from the descriptions that I read about, who is very abusive. And um, there's oftentimes the, there with the cancer moon in particular, and there's kind of other things in the chart can affect this, of course, but you'll often see that there are, um, the family of origin becomes incredibly important for uh, the the development of the native soul and where they're coming from and how they seek out emotional security. I just thought that was an interesting thing worth mentioning. It's also not surprising to see cancer moon people get involved in cults, religions, families, groups, tribes, communities, cultures that that end up serving as something like a replacement for a damaged home. Uh, and I'm not saying that that is necessarily Tom Cruise, but he is famously involved in the, is it called the Church of Scientology? I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, so I don't know if that, uh, no, it's just something to think about. Courtney Love, this is really fascinating. First of all, she grew up in a family that had all sorts of art artistic people in its background. Her godfather is Phil Lesh from The Grateful Dead. Um, her dad, I think, was a publicist for The Grateful Dead. So she grows up in, again, like almost like a Shakira situation where there's just this richness of um r romantic kind of like a uh she grows up in sort of like a, a village of um romantic sensibilities however uh she also comes into later in life along with kurt cobain who also has the moon in cancer and develops you know heroin addiction and some other really extreme uh issues that will likely result from in some ways the family of origin that she was raised in who also apparently were you know hippies that were doing a lot of drugs. And, and you know, so I, I just read briefly about it, but, you know, I, I think it's very common when you have a cancer moon to see that your ability to find a sense of at-homeness, emotional security, et cetera, later in life versus say codependencies, unhealthy attachments or whatever, um, you know, it, 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 a lot of it comes from what you were raised with. And the cancer moon is like, um, that symbol alone can reflect people who will need to find emotional security because there was a lack of it, or they were given a, the great gift of some kind of strong family background. Anyway, Aretha Franklin also has the moon in cancer. And one of the things I loved when I read about her is it was like, you know, I could, there wasn't like one thing that stood out. I mean, obviously she's got that very romantic and like I'm every woman kind of vibe. Like she literally, again, like I think that one of the greatest things about cancer, cancer moon women is they often can embody like all of the archetypes of, you know, maiden, mother, crone, whatever other we want to throw out there. But she's got all the, the feminine archetypes like working very fluidly for her. And uh, one of the things that she was, has been described as, and I read this article and there were several times in the article where she was described as the matriarch of her family and that her kids, even though she's like a, like a star described her as their matriarch. And I thought that was cool that she was, she's, she's been described as like a strong, strong mother figure. Um, but again, like one of the things that also it has, she's been known and loved for is how, how, how many women and you know, just in general, how many women she's inspired because 
of how deeply she's been able to embody feminine strength. And that's a, one of the most beautiful things about Cancer Moon. Again, often it's in the chart of women, but it really can be regardless of gender and, and so forth. So anyway, this was a little adventure uh, into the realm of the moon and Cancer. Um, I hope that it was useful and interesting for you. Get to know this moon placement a little bit more. Um, if you have a story to share, please, in the comment section, uh, drop us a note. Tell us about your experience of the moon and cancer. Maybe there's some other archetypal patterns that we didn't cover you could mention, uh, or you could confirm or, or sort of corroborate and tell us a little bit about your story and how it matches with one of the themes that we mentioned today. All right. Well, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I want to remind you that if you stick around, uh, Kaylee Haynes is back with us, giving us some moon poetry. Uh, so she has been adorning this series with some beautiful poetry focused on the moon through all of the signs. You're going to hear her spoken word poetry right after I sign off. Enjoy Kaylee's beautiful moon poetry here uh, with the moon in Cancer. Hello, hello. It's me, Kaylee, Artemis Moonchild, and I'm back here again with Adam to share my poetry um, of the moon through the signs. I'm so grateful to be back. And Cancer, mm, what a sign. <laughs> my Mars is in Cancer. Um, I feel all the feels. It's in the 12th house. My mom is a Cancer sun. Uh, so I definitely understand the cancer vibes, um, you know, from my perspective and our, our charts are complicated things, but I tried to tap into the archetype of the sign as Adam shares it through the traditional lens. Um, but of course, my poetry is always going to carry my own life experiences and the context through which I experience astrology and, and the archetypes. So I have three poems because um, I think cancer is such a a, a sign with such depth. And I think that, especially in the context of the world that we live in, um, how cancer presents in the patriarchy that we all live in um, is going to be different than kind of the pure archetype. Because if you live in a world where emotions are not valued, um, in a capitalist world where um, they don't align with maybe um, productivity through that lens and the family is not valued and the work of women is not valued equally, um, then I think that a sign like cancer um, really can become distorted or, or the, yeah, that maternal archetype um, is going to be experienced through the lens of the culture that we're living in. So that's my own two cents um, or my own, I guess, experience. And I think you might see some of those themes come through the poems that maybe differ a little bit from the pure archetype that Adam was speaking to. But I just hope that, uh, you know, art is meant to provide an emotional context um, and a personal context. And I hope you receive that today. So my first poem um, I wrote uh, specifically for this, and then I have two others to share um, that have come through at different times in my life. <clears throat> you would be moody too if you carried the world on your back, if you knew tidal waves could sweep you away with the appearance of just one crack, if you only knew the oceans banging at my door, you would forgive me for sometimes pretending that I don't know what emotions are for. If you only knew how I desperately ushered you into the light, you don't remember, but I do, the mystery of the coming night. So that's the first poem. The second poem, um, I'll just let it speak for itself. <laughs> If you want to know me, come find me. I am not hiding, and I will open the way every step you take into me. But I will not turn myself inside out, expose all my softest bits to the elements just because you're not paying attention. Knowing me is a gift that is given to those who are willing. And here's the third poem. This is specifically about um, the mother archetype with cancer um, and about children. <sighs> oh, and just for context, um, I have a 13-year-old son and I've been a single mother um, the entire time. And so, uh, yeah, I think I really resonate with, you know, 
the uh that maternal um experience and especially being a single mother just the yeah just what it is to be um a solo parent and specifically a mother in this world to a child uh, and I that's kind of where this poem came from you know now seeing friends of mine um with their partners having children um when I had mine 13 years ago um this poem kind of really came through from that experience um of seeing them really struggling through what it means uh to become a mother and how difficult it is uh, on so many levels um and just kind of re seeing my own experience and really honoring what I went through <clears throat> when a child is born it's a blessing we celebrate the arrival of this wise soul we honor the presence of God we bow to the reminder of what devotion really means we surrender Sometimes gracefully, usually chaotically, like a tumbling river surrendering to a cliff, plummeting thunderously into the abyss, scattered like rain, broken open again and again. When a child is born, it's a blessing. We learn the cracks are where the light pours in. Ooh, I got chills. <laughs> Thank you so much once again to Adam and the whole team at Nightlight. And of course, to everyone who listens to this, I am artemis.moon.child on Instagram. It is such an honor to share um, my art with you. Have a beautiful day.